This personal data locker belongs to an architect named Maxine, who's just had breakfast and comes into her home office to start her day. Maxine's work surface doesn't have any windows and doesn't need an operating system. It's one large browser showing her personal dashboard. All her data lives here. The applications she uses live in the cloud and appear as necessary. Maxine logs in and sees all the relevant information from her world up to the minute. At a glance, she can see a calendar, her appointments, her family members' schedules, personalized news, updates from her friends and colleagues, and a task list sorted by priority. She sees a message that her lab tests are in and learns that she has tested positive for a genetic marker that makes her more likely to have side effects from several classes of drugs. This is actually a big relief. She sees a quick video explanation from her doctor who would like her to see a genetic data specialist so her future prescriptions can go through her data locker to be checked for side effects before receiving any pills. He has already suggested several specialists and provided links to their websites. Maxine looks at the sites, finds a specialist she likes, and her system confirms that they take her insurance. All the data is live and meaningful to Maxine's data locker, which automatically makes the appointment with the hospital where the consultant works because it can compare both their schedules and preferences and find a good fit. Now that she's a new client, all her forms are automatically filled out by the personal information in her data locker and her new healthcare provider has access to any of her health information she wants him to see. She can always access his information from there, right in the data locker, rather than searching for his website, trying to remember the URL, or bookmarking. Maxine goes to her home management area and learns that her house has been selling energy back to the grid. She can see her home functioning visually and get alerted to anything that may need attention. The home has hundreds of sensors, allowing it to fine tune the temperature and lighting in each part of each room according to use patterns. Thanks to new standards, Maxine can control her home remotely using her phone, which gets all its information straight from her data locker. Maxine checks her personal inventory and sees a list of everything she owns and a list of all the things she's looking for. This means that her balance sheet is up to date at all times, using the current market value of all her assets. When she buys something, like a new racing bike, the information about that particular bike goes directly into her inventory and updates her balance sheet automatically. If her house were to burn to the ground tomorrow, Maxine's insurance company would immediately know the replacement value of the house and its contents. Maxine receives a reminder that her oven's warranty is about to expire, and she sees offers to extend it. If she accepts one, the rest of the offers go away immediately and don't bother her again. If there's a product recall, the manufacturer can easily find every single owner of a given batch of products and contact them anonymously. An art collector has sent Maxine an offer for one of the paintings in her collection. She asks her data locker to search for comparable sales data to help her decide whether to take the offer. Maxine didn't have to list her painting for sale. Everything she owns, including her house, is essentially listed for sale anonymously at all times by putting the information on the open web. This approach to selling, which works for new as well as previously owned goods, is called passive commerce. It makes billions of physical objects findable and comparable, eliminating the need for most of today's listing and e-commerce sites. Since all sales data is online in meaningful formats, Maxine sees several recent transactions for this artist, and she decides to make a counteroffer. Maxine recently bought a new car. Clicking on the car's digital birth certificate she can see the interconnected world of information that drives her car. She can see at a glance every service that has ever been performed, every serial number of every part, and the trail of data exhaust her car generates as she drives. 
Maxine checks her financial area and glances at her investing dashboard. She has several different investment firms working for her, and they manage the money in her account right in the data locker. She can change brokers easily because the money is right here under her control. Maxine can see all her personal networks and different social groups without going to any websites. When she establishes a connection with someone, all the appropriate information like contacts, schedules, and preferences connect to her data locker automatically. These centralized contacts actually drive her phone and any other device she uses. She never sees a phone number or an email address or even work or home addresses. She just calls or sends a message, and the recipient pulls the call or message in according to his wishes. If Maxine cuts a connection, the associated data connections are cut immediately. Maxine's data locker doesn't contain any music, videos, or even books. Instead, it helps her manage her rights and preferences. Maxine's data locker is like a virtual DJ, playing songs, radio, videos, and other media according to her activity and mood. Rather than choosing what to listen to, see, or read, Maxine just says what she likes and doesn't like, giving ratings and sharing recommendations with friends. The data locker continues to bring in new content according to her location, activity, mood, and desire to know about recent developments. All the media live on the open web, ready to be streamed by anyone, anywhere, anytime. Each song, blog, news item, and video has a unique name that allows it to be found online and it streams from there. Anyone who creates or publishes content manages it on the cloud and listeners help tag the material to make it more discoverable. Even though the content streams in, the data locker stores enough content locally to make the experience seamless. If an important call or message comes in, the personal data locker interrupts whatever Maxine is doing to bring her up to date. Maxine can see what her kids are doing, and she learns that an important client meeting is going well. Next, she sees that her counteroffer on the painting has been accepted. Her data locker will now handle the payment details with the buyer's data locker, and the description of the painting will transfer to the new owner before the actual painting arrives. In this world, Everything is under Maxine's control. In general, her information isn't public. She gives access to her data as necessary and can cut that access off anytime she wants. As opposed to the old days, when her information was scattered across hundreds of databases and devices, Maxine is now in charge of all her information. If she prefers to keep anything private or offline, she can. Her data locker powers her world of information without the need for a proprietary operating system or device. The web itself is the only platform she needs.